So this is the all new Samsung Galaxy A25 5G and its price starts at 2699 INR which is a significant price rise compared to the Samsung Galaxy A24 and the A24 was released 6 months ago. So is the A25 5G worth the price hike? Let's find out. So one of the major changes on the Samsung Galaxy A25 5G is the use of the 5G chipset. So it is using Samsung's own Exynos 1280 5G chipset and we all know that Exynos chipsets are not that great. Well, uh, if you look at the benchmark scores, the Exynos 1280 is pretty decent and even in daily talks like you buy navigation, opening apps, switching between them, the A25 5G is smooth, there are no problems, but the problem lies in gaming. So even if we compare the A25 5G with uh, Samsung A24 which uses the Helio Z99 chipset, gaming on the Exynos 1280 is not really optimized and that's a big problem. So we tested PUBG Mobile on the A25 5G and the max settings that you can go is graphics up to SD and frame rate up to high and in this setting we are getting around 30 fps likewise uh, if we compare with this with the samsung galaxy a24 samsung galaxy a24 can go up to ultra frame rate with 40 fps average gameplay likewise in genshin impact we tested uh, on the a25 g with low graphics and with fps 60 frame limit and we are getting around 38 fps average well comparing that to the a24 or the techno power 5 which has the same helio z99 chipset we're getting around 45 fps average so gaming on the exynos 1280 and in general on the a25g is not really good so the main change is the processor on the a25g and there is a minor upgrade on the display department as well so now the a25g has 120 hertz refresh rate panel compared to the 90 hertz refresh rate on the a24 well it is still the same full hd plus AMOLED panel but now it has a higher refresh rate. So the upgraded refresh rate definitely gives you smoother display uh, compared to the A24. So A25 5G feels uh, smoother than the A24 and you get these two options. One is high and is one is standard for the refresh rate. So standard is 60 hertz and in high you get 120 hertz for most of the time except while playing videos or while you are running some certain apps it will drop down to 60 hertz. And it is pretty smooth. Uh, there's no ghosting or so it's kind of problem the response rate is pretty nice but of course it is not as good as something you'll get on the flagship phones of samsung's like the s22 or even the s23 fe except that the full hd plus super amoled panel is as expected uh, the vibrancy is pretty nice and the overall uh, video watching experience or the multimedia experience is pretty good on the a25 g and the brightness is also good it is rated at 1000 nits and i did not have any problems using this phone outdoors under direct sunlight and this phone also gets a slight upgrade in terms of camera as well so now the a25 g has a 50 megapixel main sensor and 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor which is an upgrade from 5 megapixels on the a24 uh, likewise there's a 2 megapixel macro sensor and on the front we get a 13 megapixel selfie sensor on the drop notch so first let's talk about the new camera here. The 8 megapixel ultra wide definitely gives you sharp photos compared to the ultra wide of the A24 and also the A25 has better balanced exposure compared to the A24. The noise control is also pretty good. It is on the lower side. You won't notice that much noise on the edges as well. Overall the ultra wide uh, camera on the A25 is a decent upgrade from the A24. Moving on to the main camera, it is similar to that of the A24 but the A25 has a pinkish tone to it the pictures have pink tone uh, but overall the camera is really good the detail is nice the color is also vibrant and the dynamic range is also pretty good moving on to the front camera it captures really good selfies uh, there is good detail the face tone is also good overall the cameras of the a25 5g is pretty satisfactory another upgrade in the camera department is the video capturing capability so a25 5g can now finally capture 4k videos and video quality is pretty nice it is a decent bump up from the a24 of course 1080p compared to 4k is pretty good uh, also there is eis but it does not work at 4k uh, so it has a wider view at 4k than the full sd but es is not working but it already has os so yes the stability is pretty nice now moving on to full sd videos if you compare the a25 g with a24 uh, they are pretty similar but a25 has better stabilization compared to the a24 uh, so yeah that's that and there's another upgrade on the camera department as well so you can now finally switch between lenses 
while you're capturing videos. Well, but it only works when it is at 30 FPS. It does not work with 60 FPS videos. So the design remains pretty similar that to the A24. There's not much change. Uh, and to be honest, all of the Samsung phones look the same. Even the newly launched A05s has a similar design. So one of the changes is back has this texture-like profile on the back, which feels nice. And also uh, it appears to catch less modes than the A24. Except that it is a plastic back, plastic frame. And if you look at here, there's a slight change. So on the frame there's a certain lip over here where the volume keys and the fingerprint sensor has been kept so that's the change and also the speaker cutout is slightly different compared to the a24 moving on to the other side we have a sim slot over here compared to the a24 this is a downgrade because it does not have a dedicated micro sd slot this time it is a hybrid slot uh, now except that one of the major disappointment on the samsung phone is that the drop notch so even with the price hike, we still get this notch. Like why so many of the phones now come with whole phones which looks really, really nice. This does not look nice. Now talking about the OS, it comes with Android 14 other box with Samsung's latest One UI 6, which is a nice thing because Samsung has promised four years of OS upgrades and five years of OS updates. So you are getting additional one year of upgrade and update uh, compared to the Samsung Galaxy A24. So there are a lot of changes on the One UI 6 compared to the One UI 5. Uh, well, we have a dedicated video for that. So if you want to check out that, the link will be over here. So one of the main uh, changes that is nice is the revamp of the quick panel settings. So if you go to quick panel settings now, you'll get a separate toggle buttons for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth buttons. Likewise, the brightness slider has been now moved to the bottom of the uh, quick panel where you also get the option for eye comfort shield and dark mode. And also one of the nice changes is in the camera UI. So now uh, you can easily select the video resolution that you want to capture with a simple pop-up, which is a really nice touch. So is the Samsung Galaxy A25 5G worth the price hike? No, definitely not. And is this the true successor of the A24? Not really, because I would say that this is a 5G variant of the Samsung Galaxy A24, which doesn't have as good as gaming performance as the A24. But if you're looking for a 5G phone at a mid-range price, sub $250 phone, then I think this would work. But there are a lot of options out there. Uh, those are cheaper and better than the A25. So yeah, A25 5G, not really worth your money. So this is our review of the Samsung Galaxy A25 5G. And if you want to check out more videos like this, do subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon for the notifications as well. Until next time, namaste. Take leg.